Welcome to the Proactive Podcast, brought to you by Me Media. G'day world, Chris Hogan coming to you from Me Media Studio here at Burley Heads for episode 135 of the Proactive Podcast. And today I have with me Peter Cox. Welcome, Peter. Thanks, Chris, for having me. Hey, better known as Coxie, I understand. That's my uh, nickname, Coxie, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, I was first introduced to you by a good friend of ours, Theo Varactaris. Uh, he actually handed me your book, um, which was uh, How to Replace Yourself. Your business shouldn't need you. Oh. Start to replace yourself in 180 days. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Very good. Um, mate, in reading your book, uh, I was inspired to get you on the show. Uh, that was the, the, my first interaction with you. And seeing you outside uh, you know, Usher Group's office on a regular basis, um, every time I visited actually, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I knew something good was going on inside because the success of Usher Group and, and Theo, uh, I think, is definitely attributed um, to your mentorship. And, um, mate, I'm super grateful to have you here today. Thanks, Chris. Mate, um, when did you first realise you had a passion for leadership mentoring? Uh, when I started my first business in October 1988 with $11 in the bank, <laughs> it was a side hustle uh, in the direct sales industry and uh, I came from a working class background in the western suburbs of Sydney in Campbelltown. Uh, I'd seen my parents work very long hours, low to middle income earners and uh, I'd never, I'd always wanted to work for myself uh, with and, and my wife had always had that dream and uh, I realised the, the importance that if we were going to be successful in our own business, we'd have to become leaders and not managers and we started to really study leadership and I really had dedicated my life to being led and mentored over the last 34 years. So through that, you, you've sort of uh, alluded to the my next question, um, which is, you know, what's the number one mistake leaders are, leaders make when they, they want to become a better leader? I ask my clients this question. I'll ask you this question, Chris. Who leads you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I've read the book, so I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh and most people say well i lead myself, myself. coxie yeah and i go well how's that going for you yeah and they go well that's why you're here <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's Look, about having humility to allow yourself to be led like theo from the usher group very successful businessman in his own right big business yep it takes humility to step out and say i want to become accountable to someone and be led and that started for me in 1992 uh, when I walked off a big stage in Darling Harbour Convention Centre in Sydney. There's probably seven or 8,000 people there. And uh, I act, that's where I found my mentor. He's sitting in the front row and he was going to be the guest speaker. And I thought I was doing well. I had, a, you know, I had a convertible Porsche, a couple of properties. I was making more money than I ever made. I was 29 years of age. I've been in business for three years. And he said, Coxie... How long have you been in business for? I said, three years. And he said one thing to me. He said, it takes 20 years to build anything great. And then he just walked off. And it humbled me because I realised I've only been in business for three years and this guy's a giant. And so I ran after that guy and I developed that relationship for 22 years and that's why I'm here with you now Chris not because I'm smart I grew up in the western suburbs of Sydney um, half my mates are in jail the other half are dead I've been expelled from two high schools I was always going to be a leader um, my parents had to get me out of the western suburbs to the southern suburbs of Sydney otherwise I was going down the wrong pathway I was always going to be a leader but I'd always led myself and my business leadership dynamics was born out of this principle that had such a profound impact on my life that I wanted to make a difference in other people's lives by the power of leading and mentoring other people. What was the first sign in your early days that, that you had a knack for leadership or that people wanted to be led by you? That's a great question uh, because if you read all my report cards, he's a rebel, he doesn't listen... <laughs> couple of things uh i did a personality profile test on myself the litauer profile test florence litauer sold a million copies of a book called personality plus my mentor profiled me 
and and it saved my marriage as well because my wife and I have different strengths and different weaknesses and we've all, there's 20 strengths and 20 weaknesses now if you read the weaknesses they're not good you've got them I've got them but when you look at the strengths that you have in your personality and so I focused on growing six key strengths which grew my influence the number one characteristic of a leader is influence and influence means follow me so I I seek influence over results. I've dedicated 30 plus years of my life. What can I do to grow my influence so people want to follow Coxie so I can make a difference in their life, add value, be significant in their life? And that I teach my clients to think about what are you doing, Chris, right now to grow your influence? Because if you're not growing your influence, you're not a leader. Yeah. Well, to answer that, I... um. I'm very passionate about education mm -hmm. and so I, I wrote this book, um, Building Brands on Purpose mm -hmm. and I didn't realise, I always wanted to write a book, I didn't realise I had a book in me at the time and through a key personal influence course that I did, uh, founded by Daniel Priestley, mm -hmm. uh, discovered that through that process, I did have something worth saying and it was 20 years of industry experience that sort of came out in that book and and um, mate, I was I was just as surprised as everybody else that of the 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 quantity and quality of the content in that book. Isn't it interesting? You said twenty years. It takes twenty years to put anything great, <laughs> and after twenty years, you wrote that book because you've actually got something to say now. Yeah, and it will make a difference in people's lives. You 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 won't believe who may pick that book up that helps them grow their business, build their brand. Well. And even f through the small amount of people that have read it so far, it was only released last year, uh, I already do get great feedback and, and great response. My, <laughs> my father's values are a very important part of that, that book. And one person said to me, you've left not only your own legacy, but your father's legacy as well mm -hmm. in that book. His values will go on to inspire anybody that reads that book. And that that blew my mind. And whoever's listening to this podcast right now, I hated reading. Like, I couldn't wait to get out of university. I went to university for girlfriends, beers and playing football. I didn't care about getting a degree. <laughs> I got a marketing degree. A pass was 50. 51 was too much work. I got my degree. And when I said, once I got out of uni, I'm never going to read again. And I said that to my mentor who used to devour books and he was a very, very successful person in all areas of his life. And he said to me, Coxie, leaders are readers. And I've never forgotten that statement. And what I've done, I read 15 minutes today before I came here. I read 15 minutes every day. Something positive from a book, from, from a blog, right? I stay away from negative stuff and it's become a life habit. Now, when I started traveling the world, I used to look at people stare out the window for 24 hours flying to London. And I might read half a book. My, I started to create a bigger habit when I was flying. What I've learned from people that write books has helped me create more success in my life. And I'm very grateful. grateful. And he said to me, smart people write books. Okay. <laughs> so you're smarter than you think, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> it's funny, I, my mentor who's in that book, uh, Lee Kelson, he is the same, devours books. And I was already reading a bit, but when he came along, I increased that. Mm -hmm. and, and, that and after like you've consumed several, it feels like, Give me another one. Like this, this knowledge, you know, just having this amazing thirst for knowledge now. It's like life's short. I'm, you know, I'm 43. Correct. Got, got over that little hump. Mm -hmm. uh, not, you know, not gracefully, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, yeah, it, it, it's amazing. So, yeah, look, we, we digress. Look, I um, understand you have a, have a program uh, that, that helps people become better leaders and mm -hmm. and i've seen uh, from the outside not in person um that happen in 
in person inside an organization you there yes educating and mentoring Correct. people mm -hmm. uh how have you scaled that okay so to build a successful organization you build it one-on-one -on -one. so my my premium clients pay me for a half day, full day to mentor them, their key people, and there's a rhythm to it, it's every month. But I wanna reach more people. There are people that can't afford my service, okay? So what I've done is I created a program called High Performance Team Fundamentals. It's called Leading for Growth. So if you're a business owner and you are leading one person or you wanna grow a team or you're leading 100 or like Theo, 500 people, this program, you can invest in it for $297, 12 videos. It's, it's like $24 a month and it's, it's 30 minutes a week. It's the key to it is the consistency of doing this program, 30 minutes a week, the way it's all been developed. And you will lead for growth and you'll have me on your TV or your computer mentoring you one-on-one -on -one, like I would do now if you were a real life client with me, you will get tremendous value out of it because it's between you and I, the personal accountability part is the online workbook that we have to fill out the answers to the questions I'm gonna ask you on this program. And uh, it's scaling, uh, there's five or six countries now that have, for, with business owners that have come into the program i do a live hour a live hour event called the hour of power uh first or second monday of every month uh where the global community is starting to come in uh we're up to 100 now it's starting to scale it's starting to grow i've got companies that are now looking at bringing it in like the usher group to reach more of the people that can't become part of the full day program with me and uh it's just a way to give back and 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 uh make a difference in a young entrepreneur young leader's life mm -hmm. fantastic mate mm. um i'll be on that for sure so i do know what happens though to me personally um i get huge inspiration when i'm doing these courses and and i get and i do get an action now there was a time when i used to do the courses courses and and sort of float along and and not be super active I realized my mistakes and so now I am one of those re very proactive people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with your course, I'll be, I'll be excited, I'll be inspired and I'll get to the end of it and there'll be a lifetime of that, of that uh, inspiration that will occur mm -hmm. after, after I've finished the end of, it, end of that course. What do I do when I get to the end of the course, mate? Well, I'm developing new ones as we speak, Chris. Okay. So there's going to be... I, I thought you were just going to say, go back to the start and do it all over no. again. <laughs> no, but the most an important part of, the, part of uh, that Leading for Growth program is plugging into the live event once a month with the other community members. Mm. And down the track, when this crazy world stabilises a bit more... You know, I'm going to be looking at doing live events with myself and other influential people like Theo, for example, to give back to that community. So that's sort of the bigger picture, the bigger vision I have. But it's about being with the community as well and getting on the Facebook page and looking at some of the comments and learnings that other people are getting. And as I add more and more programs t to it, I've just uh, introduced one called Dream Foundations. I wrote my first book called The Dream Is Everything. And, I, and, and, and you have to have a dream, mm. not a goal. A dream's, a dream's much deeper than having a goal. And I believe the dream is everything. And the most important thing that made my dreams come true was the last chapter, chapter 10, the association factor. Who you associate with is who you become. And if you keep plugging into the Leading for Growth community, when looking at all the different other entrepreneurs and people that are part of that program, it will inspire you to keep climbing, to keep leading, to keep growing. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. So in my book, I talk about culture is strategy. And, and I didn't come up with that term. The first time I heard that was actually uh, Seth Godin, uh, reading Seth Godin's books. You have in your book, Culture is leadership. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? 
Well, I've had the honour and privilege uh, to be involved in uh, the National Rugby League uh, for seven years, 05 to 011, with Des Hasler at Manly. Yeah, really. uh, that was seven final series in a row. Then I had a couple of years out uh, when he went to the Bulldogs. Then I went to South Sydney in 014 when they won their first premiership in 43 years. Now, I'm one piece of the missing jigsaw. I don't... I'm not the coach whisperer or anything. I'm just quietly on the background, growing leadership, growing people, growing culture, all right? But what I learned from professional rugby league, Australian was football team, the Matildas, 015, I was involved in their World Cup campaign for six months, is that when you come into a team, and it's the same when I come into a business, it'll take me 30 minutes to observe discern, feel, sense whether there's a good culture or a bad culture in the organisation because w the answer is whether there's good leadership or bad leadership in the organisation. Culture is leadership. Leaders drive the culture. You hear about the word culture, culture, it's just a word. What does culture mean? To me, culture means is if it's going to be a good culture, we've got good leaders. If it's going to be a bad culture, we've got bad leaders. Everything rises and falls on leadership. I learned that from my mentor's mentor, John Maxwell. So if the leadership rises, the culture will go with it. And, and that's, I guess, what you're talking about in terms of growing yourself as a leader. As you grow yourself, you, you bring the organisation with you. So, so personal growth is... It must be paramount for all leaders to, to continue, hence reading books, doing courses, all that sort of stuff. Personal change is a decision. It's an inside job. Mm. You know, if, if you look at where I am today, if you're not meeting the same coxie that started out on that journey in October 1988, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, uh, marriage on the rocks, $11 in the bank, partied seven days a week, had no responsibility in his life and I had to make a decision that if I'm going to get serious and real about wanting to create some form of legacy and success and changing the roadmap of my family, family's history, I'm the first person in my family's entire history of, of, of a couple hundred years that I know that works for themselves. I'm the only one that went out as an entrepreneur a business owner but I've had to change a lot and you never stop growing you never stop changing and I don't want to be the same coxie next year this time I want to be a better husband better father better mentor better friend better brother yeah. it's just an attitude yeah yeah and you're competing only with yourself by the sounds of things too you're not comparing yourself to I, others that's a big mistake people mm. make. Mm -hmm. If you compare yourself to other people, you're setting yourself up for failure. I've learned to look for me down, just me. I don't look sideways. I don't look, okay? Because you don't really know what's going on in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And if you, and then some of the people that are made out to be so great, have a look at some of the stories that can happen when you go, oh my gosh. So just be the best that you can be every single day. Mm. I was up at 4.30 this morning. I started reading. I started doing some social media activity to uh, give back to the community with some thoughts. I want to I use my 24 hours, seven days a week, and be the best that I can be for me. To lead people, first you've got to lead yourself. Mm. That's a big challenge for whoever's listening to this right now. What must you do to lead you better? Never mind about you leading someone else. How are you leading you? And when I look at how I was leading myself in 1988 to how I'm leading myself now, it's a huge difference. And maybe that's why I, I live in a different house and drive a different car too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe everybody wants to be you know, this leader, the, you know, accomplish their dreams and goals. Uh, it's, um, and, and they always want to, I think they always want to be, you know, better than they are now. A, a lot of people do. It's, and the comparison syndrome comes in all the time. Why can't I have that? Oh, that must be nice, all that sort of stuff. But I love what, exactly what you said. If somebody wants to 
make a change, make that change and, and step onto that path, that new path that maybe they've never stepped onto before? What do you believe the first thing is that they need to do uh, in order to they need do that? to they need to invest in someone to mentor and lead them. Okay, they need to become accountable to someone that they trust implicitly that speaks into them into their life and tells them the truth, and that's and that takes humility. Yep, and the more successful that person becomes in life. Um, the more humility they need. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. So, when they meet resistance with that mentor, which is inevitably going to happen, uh, it could happen in a very short time frame or or whatnot. Uh, is that a is that a uh, you know mentor mentee mismatch or you know do they just need to get over it and get on with it like? If, if you really want to grow, change, grow your leadership, become wiser, more successful in life, you need to be accountable to someone. What gives you the right to lead me, Chris, if I'm under your leadership, if no one's leading you? Why should I listen to you? You're not being led by anyone, but you want to change me. So it, that's a very important point. So for 22 years, I had a mentor that spoke into my life. He died of esophageal cancer in uh, August uh, 2013. Um, he was in his mid-60s. He was older than me, wiser than me, wealthier than me. And he, we had some ding-dong battles because <laughs> he had to knock a few edges off me. <laughs> call it ego, call it pride, call it whatever you like. And then three or four months down the track, I'd say to my wife, now I know why he said this to me. He saw what was coming. When you find the right mentor, the right leader, they see things that are coming to save you time, save you money, save you pain and hurt. Yeah. But you may not like what you hear. When you get led... You are, the advice you get is only as good as the questions you ask. But the problem with that is don't ask the question if you don't want to hear the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So being the proactive podcast, I ask this question of everybody. Where have you been most proactive in your life and how has that benefited you? Proactive is... My, I've dedicated my life to growing myself as a leader every single day for 34 years. Every single day I'm focused on what can I do to grow my leadership, which really means what can I do to grow my influence. Influence means follow me. So when you look behind you, Chris, who's following you? Now, the number of people that are following you will determine how much influence you have, and that means... Uh, what sort of leader you really are if you look behind you and no one wants to follow you follow your vision you've got no influence you're not a leader we all start out with not many people following us or following us for the wrong reasons so what i've really been active in my life is well how can i have more influence in chris hogan's life if, if i'm mentoring and leading him I'm 59 years of age. I go to the gym four to six times a week. I drink three litres of water a day. I walk to my dogs three to five kilometres a day. I take me time twice a week to play golf. No phones, no social media. Okay, I work on the spiritual side of my life. I read 15 minutes a day. I'm on a gluten-free diet. The, the more that... the Leadership's about behaviours. It's not about results. Everyone wants the result. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a world surfing champion. I want to win the NRL premiership. I want 500 staff in my business. That's the result. The way in which I work in leadership dynamics, the way my online program Leading for Growth will challenge you is it's going to grow new behaviours in you. So all I've done every single day of my life, what I've been proactive about is to grow better behaviours whatever that behavior needs to be. And the better that behavior becomes, 
the better results my have my results have become. It's no coincidence. Mm. I heard a lot of things in there that I think were very um, positive and, and influential. <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing I heard in there that I think um, somebody can take away is that you have focused on you and your physical and mental health. Correct. Uh, you, you're super proactive there. Mm-hmm. You've already told us that you that you bounce out of bed at four thirty in the morning. For those people that aren't morning people, is and and that resist that, hey, I don't have to be a morning person uh, to, you know, I, to be successful. Uh, I don't have to have cold showers and ice baths and do exercise and and eat well. Um, w- what's your response to that? Everyone has to make their own choices for your for, for their own life you know what you're choosing not to change you're choosing we all have choices to make i'm not saying getting up early in the morning is going to help you become more successful that's just the way in which i need to lead myself yep. maybe you need to get up at 12 o'clock in the day and stay up till midnight. I'm not that sort of person. You've got to work out what is the right routine for you that's going to make you love the, the journey of life. I'm more of a morning person than an evening person. I get that. But it's more about when you get up, what behaviours do you really need to grow and improve in so you, so you lead and not manage. There's a big difference between leading and managing people and leading and managing your life. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm I'm a morning person, and it took me a little while to figure that out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's it's the best part of my day, to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest, because it's me time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no one else is up. Yeah, I try not to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. It's you know between uh, getting out of bed and getting the dog on the road for the mm-hmm. walk, mm-hmm. Um, and then by the time I get back, I, I, you know, I might be okay to talk to someone but maybe it's after the cold shower too so um i've created that rhythm and and i love the book atomic habits which uh, Mm -hmm. i think uh helped me implement these things you know what does mean what does it mean when i get out of bed it means walk it means walk the dog great what does it mean when i walk the dog it means have a cold shower Mm -hmm. what does it mean when i have a cold shower it means um have a miso soup Mm-hmm. What does it mean after I've had a miso soup? Maybe have an apple. <laughs> mm-hmm. Say, so, what does it mean? You know, when I see someone in the morning, you know, it means say good morning. You know, like, like, and no devices and all that sort of stuff. So I think those types of things have really helped me um, create behaviours that have that get me right before I see or try and influence anybody else. I've got to influence myself and my positive mind. Um, it, and and it, some days I just can't believe the energy I've got from that. Yeah. Like this morning, I, the podcasts do light me up. And honestly, mm-hmm. having you on as a guest, I, I was very excited about. Mm-hmm. I walked and listened to your TED talk on uh, edification this morning. Right. Mm-hmm. That was that was powerful. I actually, I think I even had a tear because mm-hmm. I know at times I have actually. Um, you know, pulled somebody else down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that had to happen for, well, I thought it had to happen for various reasons, like performance reviews or whatever. But um, to be perfectly honest, I wish I didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to celebrate people's achievements a lot more can can you elaborate on that on that ted talk on the edification edification changed my life was the topic um and it did change my life so whoever's listening to this podcast just put in peter cox edification changed my life and hopefully it'll change your life it'll hopefully it'll change the way you um interact with people people need to be empowered not torn down um people are so fragile insecure fear anxiety Um, we never know really what's going on in people's lives either just because someone's smiling doesn't mean they're smiling and uh you know the big the the big thing for me in that talk is that it helped me heal my relationship with my mother 
Mm. And, you know, my mum, she's 85 now. She's stage three Alzheimer's. I'll go into Sydney next week to see her. My dad's got lung cancer. He's in his fifth week of radiation therapy. Um, I've got no regrets now if my mum is to leave this world. I would have had regrets 15 years ago if I didn't heal it. There's a lot of great things my mum did for me. So instead of looking at the negatives, I started looking at empowering her with some of the great things she did for me. She always loved... I never... She loved me. I could never say she didn't love me. I need to acknowledge, I need to acknowledge that more than what I used to besides the, the bad stuff that was going on. Okay, so um, um, you can promote anyone but yourself. So who can you promote today? to make them feel better as a human being? Who can you edify? Edification means to build up. I hope that I'm promoting you, mate, because to be perfectly honest, I'm, I'm in total awe of what you've done, of how you changed your life. Mm. Um, that change that you, those changes that you've made and, uh, and how you chased after a mentor, um, I've done similar things. <laughs> Chased after a mentor at an event. Um, needless to say, they didn't. Unfortunately, they didn't last long as a mentor. But um, that change, those changes that you made in yourself, I think, you know, uh, they really are inspiring. Yeah. And my mentor came out of a, of an engineering background and direct sales background, and I was speaking on leadership at a direct sales conference. So it was just, uh, and and the, and and I was just lucky that he saw leadership in me, that he took the time to um, invest twenty two years of his life into me and, and and teach me not only about how to build a big 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 businesses and lead people, but about marriage relationships spirituality edification i learned edification from my mentor i'd never heard of it before he said you de-edify you don't edify i said what's that mean pull people down i used to pull people down i didn't used to, to promote yourself to make yourself feel better Correct. make yourself feel bigger i used to be a bad sledger you know, I grew up from in the western suburbs of Sydney. It, it, I grew up in a very tough neighbourhood, and um, the language that was used, and you never built people up; you tore them down. Yeah. And um, I can't change my past. No. But, and I think we can all do better about empowering and uplifting and building people up. And 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 right now, my mental health is very important because my mo my mother's dying my mm. father's right on the edge mm. my youngest son broke his neck playing footy seven years ago and we've had seven years of hell with that but he's starting to recover now my oldest son got melted down with covid 17 week lockdown in sydney so we're you know we're helping him heal right now right he's 28 years of age he's a gun in digital media marketing and sales and everything so i'm a parent i'm a husband i've got to do things in my life to lead me better so that I don't lose it. Yeah. Because I'm a human being. Yeah. And probably the most confronting thing in my life right now is going to see my mum, who doesn't know me anymore when I see her in hospital. She thinks I'm Peter and I've got a TV show on Channel 7. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I go. And she did say, but you're very good looking. I said, you got that right, mum. <laughs> that's, that's all she says to me, nothing else. <laughs> and my dad has tears in his eyes. Oh. You know, like yeah. it, it's it's a tough gig. Yeah, watching your parents get older. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My my old man died in 2010 right. from uh, cancer from asbestos. So, right. So I laid dormant in his body for 35 years. Really. Before he even knew about it, and um, wow. and and that was mm. that was uh, honestly when I look back, um. I miss him dearly, mm -hmm. um, and hence why he's so much in my book. But mm -hmm. um, it was a very good time to heal a lot of wounds and and to um, for him to you know sort of make amends with my elder sister because they were head to head. He was he was a young father, mm -hmm. you know, father at twenty one kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. like um, so you know. It, that's that slow death over a 12-month period 
end up being a good thing. Because mm. you you got to say a lot of things that you otherwise might not say. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, at the end, he, yeah, he lost his mind, um, mm-hmm. which was very sad. But um, one of the funniest things he was a he was a dairy farmer's son, mm-hmm. so and uh, he became a cattleman at the end of his life. He spent six years, the last six years of his life, living out his dream. Wow. He uh, he owned his cattle farm, mm-hmm. three hundred acres at casino, one hundred and fifty head of Angus cattle mm-hmm. and it was just, awesome just loving it the dream is everything oh mate he's the first person i know and probably still today probably the only person i know that every time he said you know i just my dream is to own a cattle farm i'm going to be a cattle farmer and he did it <laughs> i was like that's bullshit <laughs> who does that mm-hmm. you know and he did it and um there's a big lesson there because oh, time is short and time yeah. passes quickly. And he only got six years of it though, but he got it. He got it. Mm-hmm. He, he, he knew he was going to die young. He kept on saying it. I've mm. only probably got another 10 years. He said it all the time. I was like, Dad, stop it. Mm. Stop talking like that, you know? Mm-hmm. But the funny thing that happened at the very end, he lost his mind. He, we put it, he was on death's door. We put him in hospital. He had 24 hours basically there in the hospital. And, and when he got into hospital, they gave him oxygen. He hadn't had any oxygen, and, and, you know, during the last, you know, 12 months of his life. And it gave him this huge burst of energy. Right. And he burst out of bed. And he didn't know what was going on. So he picked up the cables on the floor that were leading to all the, you know, things beeping and buzzing and lights and all the rest of it. And he made a lasso and he tried to lasso the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> that was his last night on earth. <laughs> 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 what a champion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it is a tough time, isn't it? Um, when you when your parents get old and the people you love get old, and especially the Alzheimer's, man. I, my, my grand, I remember my grandmother going through it, like not knowing who it was, and my grandfather, absolutely. Yeah, it's and tough. The, and the reason why I share that is I've got to be the best leader I can be for my family right now. I've got to stay strong. I've got to stay level. Yeah. I can't lose it. Mm. And the more pressure, the calmer I've got to be. So when do you take time to grieve? Uh, on the golf course. <laughs> sorry, t- sorry, I laughed there, mate. Cause when I hit a bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. I go, I, I go, I go up to the Grand Golf Course. I'm a member up there in Narang, and uh, I, I, I play 18 holes on my own, like I did yesterday, in two and a half hours. Beautiful afternoon, and I think about what I'm grateful about, what I'm sad about, what lessons. Did I learn um, why I love my wife so much, kids, you know, what can I do for my dad right now? I, I just need that me time just to yeah. think things through. There's no noise. There's no one around me. And I think, you know, everyone needs to have that time. People don't take the time to think. They take the time to do. The greatest gift you can give a human being is to change the way they think. If your thinking doesn't change, nothing changes. You keep thinking the same way, you're going to keep getting the same results. Mm. And that's the power of this podcast. Whoever's listening to this podcast right now, there may be one thing that you or I have said that changes the way they think, which means they'll change the way they behave, which means their results will change. So I'm 100% on board with that. I take time out of of business and and family life to take care of me just to just to be with me mm-hmm. and and uh i have cadence when it's a full week when it's a there's no public holidays and there's and you know and it's normally wednesdays wednesdays are my day off i prefer to surf all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. going through this easter period when it's uh <laughs> you know a four-day week Every week of the month, (laughs) I say to myself, look, you can't afford to have that time out. You've just got to slog it through, which undoes me. You cannot not afford to have that time out. Yeah. 
you have to make time for yourself. It'll actually make you more effective. Mm. And in my book that I wrote, Your Business Shouldn't Need You, if you've got people you're paying, like I pay staff, I'm going to empower them and just do your job. You have to be able to delegate. And leadership is a responsibility. You've got a big responsibility when you lead people. Whoever is leading people, it's a big responsibility. But first, you've got to lead yourself better. It starts with you. Mm. Mm. Uh, my questions have jumped off the screen, mate. But um, it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you, Coxie. Uh, I think that so many people in in the Priority Podcast Network would benefit from from your services, your mentoring. Um, and like you said, if that's not affordable, the, it was Lead for Growth. Leading for Growth. Dot with, with, com? Uh, leadingforgrowth.com.au with number four, num- leading four, number four growth.com.au. And if they want to go to my website, uh, Leadership Dynamics, www.leadershipdynamics.com.au, there's two e- free ebooks they can download. They can download The Dream is Everything, and they can download Your Business Shouldn't Need You. There's two free ebooks that they can download off the website if they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fantastic. There was a lot of people in that book that uh, had some yeah. very good things to say about you, mate. And um, and it's a funny thing about testimonials, isn't it? Like, uh, you you probably wouldn't have put any in there that would have talked negatively about you. <laughs> no, no. So so everybody knows. That's why that. I didn't put my wife in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your wife's a lovely person. <laughs> um, that probably, uh, yeah, helps you to grow, all, <laughs> you know, every day by giving you <laughs> critical feedback. <yeah. laughs> but um, I think the 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 quality and the and the quantity of those testimonials in that book was, um, I think, a testament to you and and I think your life. Um, actually, one thing before we go, it seems to me that every successful person has gone through some kind of adversity. You, it started very early in your life. Theo, the same. I didn't have any mm-hmm. until I basically had a midlife crisis at 40. Mm-hmm. And that has elevated me to change my life and and do better and and change my output on life what what's your viewpoint on that on the adversity side of things i try and share this with my clients um one day you'll wish you had more time and you had more money when people say you don't need money no it's the love of money but you need money and you need time you're going to get a phone call one day no one does not get this phone call where you wish you had more time and more money. So you've got to prepare yourself for adversity. Get ready for it because it's coming. That phone call, that moment in your life is coming. No one misses it. You may be 50 years of age right now and life is just fantastic. It's coming. Maybe you've already had stuff in your 30s. 20s like I did that's why you need to change grow equip yourself because if you don't strengthen your mind strengthen your spirit you don't strengthen the right behaviors when that big call comes which really rocks your world you'll fall apart nice one I've got some great responses to that, but I'm going to leave the podcast on that note. That was fantastic. And we're all going to face adversity and uh, we need to prepare ourselves for it. So in my language, that means pro- being proactive. <laughs> being proactive. Yep. Prevention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks very much, Cosi. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Have you got me. a social channel that people can follow you on? What, what's uh, your hand- handle? How do they find you? Um, Peter Cox Coxie on Instagram uh, and leading... F- uh, um, uh, LinkedIn, they can link in with me. I've 12,500 followers on LinkedIn under Peter Cox. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Thanks again, mate. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. That was episode 135 with Peter Coxie. We are on Apple, 
podcasts, Spotify, but above all, we're all on all every episode is on YouTube. And uh, you can find them there by searching for Me Media or searching for Peter Cox. Uh, as well as if you can't find them there, go to memedia.com.au. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.